Now on Radio 4, guess what Carl's fed up with this week in Carl Pilkington's Sick of It, narrated by Elizabeth Conboy. Carl Pilkington is sick of people telling him he should be on Twitter. I think in years to come we'll look back on it and go, what was all that about? They're sort of obsessed, aren't they, about having mates, all this online stuff, the Twitter stuff. That's not mates. No. They're not mates. Some people think that's that's what they do. They go. Yeah, some mates. people got some people got imaginary friends as well. Some people sit in an attic and cover their head in tin foil and think they're talking to God and aliens, but they're not. I, I wasn't really looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> so Carl has decided to put Twitter to the test. Ah, oh, yeah. Who are you looking for? By the power of tweets, he's going to see if he can become proper friends with the site's best-known user. Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry. The reason that I'd like Stephen Fry as a mate is because he's brainy and I haven't, I haven't got a brainy mate. But can Cole really become friends with Stephen through Twitter? If, if I can't make a, a proper mate out of Twitter, then it's all pointless. Going right back, Snow White only had seven mates. She never went off, did she? She never went off from them dwarfs she knocked about with. There was never a new member. But seven mates, she had it all done. Seven was enough for her. She had a happy one and a grumpy one and a sleepy one or whatever. I, I don't know what they all did, I, I can't remember. But she had it covered in seven. Now that says a lot, doesn't it? That she had all the different sorts of characteristics done in Seven Dwarfs. So that's, that's all I think we need really. Seven different mates. One for moaning, you know, sometimes it's nice to have a mate who moans because it makes you feel better. That's when she would have seen grumpy. One when she's not in the mood for a lot of chat, knock about with sleepy. I think there's something in that. So you don't need more than seven mates. So this is where I need to find Stephen Fry, you know. Along with Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant, Carl is the star of the world's best-selling podcast. But despite his success on the internet, he has never joined a social networking site like Facebook or Twitter. To track down Stephen Fry, he'll have to. Well, I'm just going to try and sign up to Twitter. See if they'll have me. I don't know if there's any sort of, you know, questionnaire. If it's like joining the army, or if they'll just have, you know, if they'll have anyone. This connection's not very fast. Carl Pilkinson. I think it would actually be quicker to just go out and meet some people than use this computer. I'll just skip that. Keeping in touch with people is of prime importance to the author Danny Wallace. His most recent book, Friends Like These, documented a summer where he went in search of his old classmates. And for Danny, Twitter is an exciting addition in the pursuit of friendship. How many people have you got following you? I've got uh, um, uh, on my way to 40,000 people. 40,000? 40, 40,000 people. Essentially, you've got your own little army, your own little army of followers. Uh, and they'll respond to you because, you know, they've signed up to you. They've got something invested in you. Oh, you look a little distraught by this. No, it's just, it, that's another problem though. They're investing in you. Now, what happens if what they're investing in isn't that good? Right. And they were a big, big fan. Yeah. And then you say, I'm just nipping to the shop for some dog food or whatever. And they go, don't know how long I'm going to be following this man. Yes. How many friends do you make a year, would you say? <sighs> Not many. Right. Not many. You're I've, I've got a handful. I, you see, I think all you need, really, He's seven. Yeah. But I'd say that's it now. I'm not saying seven a year or anything. It's no. kind of, if, if I let one in, one's going out. Right, one in, one out with you, yeah. It's kind of a try before you buy. Yeah. Whereas Twitter is very much eBay. Yeah. I want it. Well, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Here's me money. Right. Well, don't complain when it turns up and that sofa's got a little stain on it. There he is. Stephen Fry, British actor, writer, lord of the dance, prince of swimwear and blogger. Uh, 
click on his face. He's got 726,000 followers now. That's a lot, isn't it? You know, I don't think you can have a thousand friends. I certainly don't think you can have a thousand acquaintances. I don't think, you know, um, sending tweets to each other count as friendship. Amongst Carl's friends is the star of hit TV show The Office, Ricky Gervais. I think friends are up there with the most precious things anyone can ever have in life. What? There's no, there's no replacement. Well, you see, they used to say a dog. His man's best friend. Yeah. And I'd probably agree with that when I was younger. But since they've brought in this law that you've now got to pick up his shit, I've gone off them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I say I've got seven mates like Snow White has, but I've kind of got, you know, two or three dopeys. Like, it'd be good to sort of bring Stephen into the mix to sort of, you know, bring something new to me. I don't know what's what's happening here. Oh, hoping no tobacco after shave this birthday though. Right, it's his birthday. By sheer coincidence, the day Carl has joined Twitter to try and become a real friend of Stephen Fry has turned out to be Stephen's birthday. Well, I've got to think about what I want to say because you can't just you can't be too familiar, can you? See, this is where in real life you can slowly, you know, slowly get to know someone. But now. If I've got to send him a message, it's got to be something worthwhile, hasn't it? I know it's his birthday, but I don't just want to say happy birthday because that's... he'll have loads of them. I guess when you're starting off, you do tend to post a bit too much. You do tend to, you know, funny ideas will pop into your head uh, that turn out not to be all that funny when you put it down to 140 characters. Because that's the other thing, obviously. this character limit, which a lot of people think is a problem, but actually I think is one of its greatest strengths. Because you have to hone your message. Come up with fantastic imagery of things around you, little jokes that you can share with your friends, and then they're just this pocket-sized little message, just like pop it up and going, hello. What about if I find out other people's birthdays today? You might like that. Jean-Michel Jarre. Uh, he'd, he'll probably like someone from sort of years ago who does poetry or something. Steve Guttenberg. It's his birthday today. We all know him. Yasser Arafat. It's a bit heavy though, isn't it? Steve Gottenberg's a good one, because everybody likes Jaws. Wasn't he in Jaws? Oh no, he was in Police Academy, wasn't he? I reckon that's a good opening gambit. If I just say, happy birthday. Uh, it's funny it's your birthday today. It's Steve Gottenberg's as well. Trying to get older, Stephen, I sort of feel the same way I did when I was younger, when uh, I joined Dennis the Menace fan club. Loads of kids wanted to be part of the Dennis the Menace fan club, in the same way that loads of people are following Stephen Fry on Twitter. But all the kids were disappointed at school. You know, you'd go in and say, as Dennis wrote to you, no, he sent me a badge, yeah, I got one of them, yeah. You don't feel special, you're not getting a personal touch. Does he, does he give the personal touch? Or is he just, you know, telling everyone what he's had for his dinner? In an effort to understand more about what makes a good tweet, Carl goes to visit the author, David Baddiel. I got interviewed by John Humphreys on Today about Twitter. And he doesn't like Twitter. And they said, well, you've never tried it, John. And so his tweet was about what's wrong with not liking something you've never tried. That's a good tweet, because you'll get loads of people coming up with ideas and thoughts and arguments about that. I, I wouldn't skydive. Well, I've never skydived and I've never, I, I've never done it and I wouldn't do it because I just have a sense that I'll be too frightened. Homosexuality. Go on. Well, I, I know I'm not gay, even though I've never tried it. Now, you could argue, well, if you tried it, you would find out, but I am... I reckon you'd probably find it all right. Do you think? It's like all that weird stuff that people get up to, you know, like having it away with a dead body or whatever. Yeah. Now, I, I never think about that, yeah. but I imagine that if you think about it a lot, you can convince yourself to do it, and then you'll go, actually, That's it's cool. all right. <laughs> like olives. I never used to like olives. And then you try a couple and you go, 
What was I worried about? Carl also seems to be developing more of a taste for Twitter. I'll sign in again, just to see if Stephen has got back to me. So I sent the message saying uh, Steve Guttenberg has a, has a birthday on that day. Then he's going on about, I'm in a Greek restaurant in Midtown Manhattan. Very scrummy. See, what I don't get is, I mean, all this, it's clear now that he's not in his house. He could get his house robbed, because everyone knows he's in New York. I wouldn't tell anyone anything. You say, I'm not doing this. They don't need to know. So, basically then, he hasn't got back to me. These are just all group messages. Having so far failed to make friends with Stephen Fry, Carl decides to find out who else he might be able to chum up with on Twitter. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people on there that, that you'd expect, but then one that I sort of came across and I thought, what's he doing on there? What's he doing on Twitter? Alan Bennett. Alan Bennett on Twitter. I mean, he must be what? He must be in his 70s. Surely he's got enough friends, you know, true friends that he's known along the years. He doesn't need any new ones. I didn't think, you know, he'd have time in his life for, you know, talking to numbnuts all over the place. If you went to a load of train spotters and said, there are no more trains, but you can still meet up here every Tuesday and chat, they'd be happy with that. Because really, they're finding each other. It's all about sort of companionship or knowing you're part of the world. Ricky Gervais is responding to Carl's suggestion that life will be better with no friends at all. You're, you're in a hut in the Outer Hebrides. I don't know, how is that being alive, really? If there's absolutely no interaction between you and the rest of the world, and I mean on a personal level, I mean with another human being. Yeah, but, but you're making it... I'm not talking about living in a, on a hill and being able to walk about in just my underpants because no one's ever going to see me. Yeah. I'm talking about... Why have your underpants on? Well, there could be something. I'm just saying someone could pass and go, hello, and then the first thing they see is me walking around with my tackle out. I just don't think it's... it's but who are they there's no tell? problem wearing underpants. <laughs> <laughs> they're comfy pants. The ones I get are, 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 are very, you know, they're never a problem. You're not a fan of nudists, are you? I don't, see, I don't they like meet it. up. They, they make friends. Are the nudists? They go along and they go, "Look, we're all we're all in the same boat here. We all, none of us like clothes." Well, they say that, but then they're wearing a hat or they've got a rucksack on or flip flops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's just the pants they don't like. <laughs> That's the only bit. They're not nudists. They pant haters. They're quite happy. They've got a beard. That's like wearing clothes to me. That's a balaclava. Have a shave. <laughs> and down there. I'd rather have no mates than a bloke who goes, I've seen an Intercity 128 today, not interested, leave me alone. And maybe I'll look back on this little venture, you know, I'll look back in years to come and think, why did I want Stephen as a mate? What was I thinking? Just in the same way in King Kong where that woman, you know, knocks about with the ape and the ape thinks he's going to get off with a woman. It's like it's never going to happen, forget it. Maybe that's, that's what it's like with Stephen. I don't know which one's the ape. Basically, the, the you know long and short of it is, he still hasn't got back to me, and we're on day three now. Danny Wallace is keen to help Carl become friends with Stephen Fry through Twitter. But what are you going to do about Stephen Fry then? I mean, so, so he's not even acknowledging me. I think to get his attention, what what perhaps you should do, is um, is, is is say something funny. Uh, or uh, or come up with something interesting that's like a gift to him. Well, I told him so the other day, it was his birthday the other day, I said, you share it with Steve Guttenberg. OK. Nothing. Right, OK. Nothing back. Or, you know, uh, you, uh, you sort of along those lines, maybe, but, but maybe less Guttenberg-based. Although disappointed that he hasn't had any personal contact from Stephen Fry, Carl at least learns from Twitter that Stephen has been eating out again this time with a film director who Carl hasn't heard of. Fred Schwepsi. So I'll just say which, which Fred Schwepsi film would you recommend? Oops, it's capitals, that's, that's shouting, isn't it, if you write in capitals. That's probably what I'll be doing by the end of the week. Well, 
I, I sort of chased the Alan Bennett thing because I thought, you know, if I was to do Twitter, I'd quite uh, be quite good having Alan Bennett as a mate, wouldn't it? Because he seems a bit like me. I can imagine him not having that many mates, you know. I sort of look at myself as almost like a slug, a bit of a loner. You know, you always see a slug on its own. You never see him in pairs, just always sort of climbing up a wall on its own. And Alan Bennett's a bit like that. Uh, got in touch, turns out it wasn't him. Which is an odd thing, isn't it? I don't know why someone would join up Twitter to make friends as someone else. Do you want to go and have a look at some of my tweets? Let's, let's have that a look, yeah. All right, then. So what, um, when, you, when you've said you... After Bedeel... discovering that Alan Bennett's identity has been stolen, Carl asks David Bedeel whether celebrities face any other risks on Twitter. What happens if they think, oh, oh David's really friendly, I'm going to track him down? Yeah, well, that would be bad. And also, I'll tell you what also happened once. He's gone away now. But I got tweeted, I mean, you know, assuming it was true, from a bloke who was in Broadmoor. Really? A bloke sent me a really odd, he's in here somewhere, odd sinister tweet that said, Hello, David, I've always liked you. I think you might be a good person to tweet. I'm in Broadmoor. And then he next tweet said, Guess who's sitting next to me? Go on, you'll never guess. And I didn't say anything, but I thought, Well, it's a Yorkshire Ripper, isn't it? It's got to be. Yeah, that's who's in Broadmoor. I don't know. Well, Dennis Nielsen, I think, might be there that's too. That's an odd one to sort of say you'd never guess. It's, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, it is odd. But, but I suppose again, if you're in Broadmoor, that's the way of, like, you know. But then again, you see, a part of me would be quite interested to hear from someone who's got a totally different life to me. Right. Carl, apart from Suzanne, your girlfriend, have you got a better mate than me in the world? Uh. Well, I've I've got like my mate from school, the one mate I've, I keep in touch with, and he's he I use him as like a almost like a memory stick. <laughs> Do you remember Mark Royal from school? Yeah. This is what he looks like now. That isn't Mark Royal. <laughs> Laurie Peters is the only friend Carl is still in contact with from school. So everyone's going to see that who haven't seen him for a while and think that's him. And has Mark Royal said anything to you about that? Has he seen that? Yeah, he's, he's not that happy about it. Carl is hoping Laurie can shed some more light on the appeal of Twitter. Well, wouldn't your mum like to know if she was on Twitter and you was on Twitter and she got alerted to your every, you know, your little quips that happen in the day? I speak to my mum and dad like every day. Not for long, for like, might be five minutes and it's normally, what have you been up to? And they've been playing cards and they'll say, oh, your auntie Nora's fell over again. All right, that's kind of the general chat. And I don't like going over what I've been up to, because I've been through it. If, if anything, it would do my head in, because I'd realise how, how dull my life is. But excitement isn't far away. The case of fake identity takes another twist, as Carl learns unexpected news about the Twitterer who's been posing as Alan Bennett. I think I was thinking Alan Bennett drinks a lot of tea and there's a lot of caffeine in it, isn't there? So I was thinking that maybe Alan's up all night, teed out. I just thought there's a reason why he's putting all these messages at 4 and 5 a.m. in the morning. But the reason was, it's not Alan in London, it's Michael in Sydney. I don't know what he's playing at. All right, so your question, <laughs> it's all about Stephen Fry. <laughs> Looking for Stephen Fry, you've said... And then on August the 24th, you said, Happy birthday to my first ever tweet to Stephen Fry. I think you may share the same birthday as Steve Gutenberg, brackets, Police Academy. I Why know. did you put, I think, surely you, you checked that and you, it was true. true. Yeah, I did. But I also wanted to just sort of use that as a, oh, I think. <laughs> okay, like, sound, sound casual. Brain. Sound yeah. casual. It's over a week now since Carl set out to test Twitter by seeing if he could become real friends with Stephen Fry. But he hasn't received as much as a hello. I keep being nice to him, but eventually I will get annoyed. However, Carl has managed to track down the Australian Alan Bennett impersonator. I signed on as myself and then I thought, well, I haven't got anything to say. And I just thought it would be really funny if somebody like Alan Bennett was doing Twitter because he's, he's, he's got so much to say and I, I thought most of the people on Twitter don't have anything to say at all. Do they think you are 
Alan. I think a few, quite a few have been sceptical and saying, well, if you are the real Alan, well, hello, it's nice to hear from you. But there's already been a few people saying, I, I can't believe Alan Bennett is on Twitter doing <laughs> tweets every day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think they're kind of sceptical too. So what, what do you sort of, uh, you know, get out of it? Being from Yorkshire originally, I, I, I like it almost as a way of keeping in touch with my roots. And I, I did something about talking about mashing the tea because... I occasionally hear these phrases which you don't hear anymore in, in common speech and I just heard somebody say, oh, the tea's mashed and I thought that's something people don't say these days. He was a bit upset about it. Does, you know, can, can you understand why he'd feel that way or...? Oh, I could understand that, yeah. Um, I'm sorry if he is upset. I, I think it's such a, a low-key thing that just a few hundred people have been following me. Um, yeah, uh, I don't want to upset Alan because I'm a big fan of his. Maybe I'll stop. That evening, Michael closed down his fake Twitter account. And it got Carl thinking. It was just a bit of escapism for him, wasn't it? You know, he's probably fed up of being Michael in the same way that I have days when I get sick of being Carl and I think, what would it you know, be like to be someone else? Because that's, that's you know, how I used to use CB. You know, when I was younger, I had the CB radio. Yeah, 19, anyone out there out of trash, you got a copy? Like, there was a woman who was on there known as Sexy Lady, and for ages I spoke to her thinking, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm on it, you know. Turns out it was Linda Evans from, you know, Three Doors Down. Yeah, she's all red devil, eh? Believe me, she, she was far from, you know, a sexy lady. I mean, there was a few giveaways. Now and again you could hear her eating when she was talking to me, but... You know, for quite a while, I was quite happy with myself, thinking, oh, I'm keeping a, a sexy lady interested. Try and catch you later on, go on, bye. It's now a fortnight since Carl laid down his challenge to Twitter to prove its worth by helping him become friends with Stephen Fry. Oh, so it's, nothing's changed, really. Appearing to be no closer to making contact with Stephen, Carl considers a new plan of attack. I've been thinking that you know, the only reason I spoke to Michael is because I thought it was Alan Bennett. And, you know, when I spoke to Sexy Lady on the CB radio when I was a kid, I was only talking to her because I thought she was a sexy lady. She wasn't sexy. He wasn't Alan Bennett. But the thing is, it worked. So I'm thinking, why don't I, you know, pretend to be someone else that Stephen would be interested in? I'm thinking of being someone else. Who are you going to be? Well, who would, who would Stephen... Who, who's Stephen a fan of who he wouldn't actually know, so he couldn't text them and say... Is this you? Yeah. Uh, you want to be careful, because if you said, Hi, I'm Tom Hanks, what you'd do is he'd check your page and he'd find out you had one follower or two followers. You'd think, that can't be Tom Hanks. Well, I think, oh, ah, but if I just go, Hey, Stephen, I'm new round here. And he'd sort of say that thing. Uh, I've just joined. Yeah. You've, you've convinced me to do it. I'll be honest, Carl, I think you'll see through it. Uh, but that's why I think you might go for a writer, you see, because writers, someone like Martin Amis, he'll, he'll be respected by Stephen Fry, but he might not have that many people following him on Twitter because he's not like a film star. All right. But then Stephen might respond to him. Have a look. Just check if he's there. No, he's, he already exists. There is already a Martin Amos on Twitter, and Carl is getting frustrated. <sighs> All a bit of a waste of time, really, wasn't it? But just as Carl begins to contemplate giving up on Stephen Fry and Twitter, along comes a flash of inspiration. Got it. Got a great idea. Someone who who I know that he likes, I've heard him talk about him on the telly, I know he hasn't got a Twitter account. Alan Bennett, innit? Alan Bennett. I, I, I could just say something like, you know, all right, Stephen, it's Talon here. Are you into, uh, are you into mashing tea? Something like that. That'll, that'll probably get his attention. All that's left for Carl now is a nervous wait and a chance to reflect. Maybe it's my fault, really, when I think about it, that I don't have that many mates, because it's like uh, I can't sort of put up with people. Even when I was younger, 
you know, I didn't have mates round and that just because my dad worked nights and, you know, so it was like you can't bring people round because you wake your dad up. So I ended up just staying in and watching, you know, telly with subtitles on it or playing Operation with the batteries taken out, which, you know, I mean, I was quite good at it, but not the same, is it? Finally, a month after setting Twitter the challenge of helping him become friends with Stephen Fry, Carl gave up. I mean, I kind of thought maybe he was too busy or something, but I look at his page now and he's, he's out eating again. It's a bit annoying. I'm going to call him Stephen Fry up from now on. Carl never did receive a personal reply, either as himself or as Alan Bennett. So Carl closed down both accounts. I still think my theory about Snow White only having seven mates and all that. I still think I'll stick to that rule. It's just a shame I couldn't have got Stephen as a mate because it would have meant, you know, I could have got rid of one of my more annoying friends. You didn't let me come round to your house, so one day I had to follow you. And then you saw me and you started to walk quicker, so I walked quicker. You started to run, so I ran. So soon, now, you're being chased through the streets of Soho at quite high speed by the fat bloke from the office. In the same way that Snow White had all the different little... Dwarfs. And all that. Yeah. I kind of think... friends, though? She knocked about with them a lot. Yeah, I suppose they were her friends, yeah. Um... yeah I think it's questionable. <laughs> yeah, having that many dwarf friends, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, what's going on there? Positive discrimination, fair enough. But I think she'd have widened it a bit. People were looking, we were both sweating. It was <laughs> weird. But I need to know where you lived, because that's what friends are for. I need to know where my friends are. But I don't remember Dion Warwick singing that when I was younger. I think maybe Twitter isn't for you, and also, I think maybe society isn't. But well, you'll be sad when your friends die, won't you? Um. You'll miss them, won't you, because you used to have a laugh with them? Yeah, uh, but then you get another one, and that was a that was like a chapter. It's like you know, brilliant. We've been through loads of cats. It's the same thing. Well, it's not really, is it? It is the same because a I've... lifelong friend. There's nothing quite like it, is there? A lifelong. Well, I haven't. I haven't done. I haven't no, got one but what then. I mean is, it, if if we continue being friends yeah, for the next us... forty years, yeah. and I die, you're going. Oh, I've got a little. I'm a little friend now. He used to come round and squeeze me out with his arthritis. Oh, God. He used to squeeze so hard his colostomy bag would just splatter all over our bourbons. And what was your question again? <laughs> would you miss me? <laughs> Carl Pilkington's Sick of It was narrated by Elizabeth Conboy, and it was written and produced by Steve Bolton.